Hi, welcome. Today I would like to talk about React Error Boundaries and it's a cool uh, good feature that you can use in your production apps. So let's get started. Um, so just to um, have an app that is already working and is being done in, uh, as a production build, I will just show you what it is. Basically in the constructor I have a state and we just set up some variable called has error so we know there is an error and that's all we are doing here and I'm calling in uh, to display a table and I call two fragments uh, one and two and to simulate an error what I'm going to do is in one of the fragments I would just set a property called error equal to true uh, just for demonstration here it is false so you can see when the app is running fine what it does in the fragment all we are doing is if there is an error is equal to true we throw a new error otherwise we just uh, display the fragment so as you can see right now this is what the app is going to show because there is no error and everything is good so let's just simulate an error here and how to catch it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just throw an error object here and this is a simulated error and I have to make a few small changes in app.js to do the error boundaries so let's uh, get started. Uh, first thing you want to do is uh, to add this hook called component did catch and uh, I'm going to insert that in here right now just before the render function. I guess it doesn't really matter where you insert it. And uh, error is going to be whatever the uh, message that you sent in an error object. And I'm going to just set the state has error equal to error. And I'm going to print the info information the component stack here on the console but I mean that's not really required but you can do that as well and so the other thing that is left is if there is an error in your state you want to render something else so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to copy this snippet here in app.js and before this render function if there is an error I'm just going to return a div which has the logo and then it has the sum error in child component and I look at the has error and I will use the method to string to display the string property here and you can see the error is uh, basically setting a simulated error so let's see if we can uh, build this in production actually you have to do a production build to be able to see this problem otherwise you don't really see it so let me just see uh, what we have here I'm just rebuilding this again and once it is rebuilt, I'm going to serve it just using a static server here for demonstration. Yeah, it just takes a few seconds to uh, display that. The running, uh, the reason I'm doing this in the uh, static server or the production build is so you can see the alternate uh, UI being displayed. If you don't do that uh, in the development build, you don't see the alternate UI displays which I think is a little bit of a weakness. It would be nice to see the alternate image and in the, so looks like it's uh, getting cached here. So let me just make sure it's getting removed here, everything. And let's uh, we run this thing, okay. So I think we didn't, uh, we forgot to set the error. So let's just do an error setting here. Uh, kill this thing and go back to my and rebuild and once it is rebuilt we'll go back because now we are setting the error so we should be able to see the error uh, being thrown from the fragment and then we can catch it here in component it catch in the app component which is using this and when we have that error we display the alternate UI so that's kind of the pattern you can follow uh, when you are using error boundaries and let's see if this works and let's make sure we are deleting or uh, any of the caching okay so once the caching is deleted you can see it displays some child component in error and this is a simulated error the message that was coming from the uh, component so that is actually pretty much the demonstration I wanted to cover today and if you like I'm going to put this uh, video under react.js boundary and you have a great day